Test. Test. Today is Wednesday, March the 28th, 2018. This is a regular, whoops. This is a regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. And the first thing on our um, agenda is a proclamation recognizing March, 20, March 12th through the 16th as Colorado Nonprofit Week. So I think we have some invited guests here. So if they would like to come up here, Mitzi. Okay, this is a proclamation of the Board of County Commissioners of Pitkin County, Colorado. Whereas, the week of March 12, 2018 has been designated as Colorado's Nonprofit Week in this state, a time for Colorado residents to thank, honor, praise, and publicize the broad impact of nonprofit work in Colorado. And, whereas Colorado Nonprofit Week is a time to thank board members, volunteers, and staff who work so hard year round to make a positive difference and <clears throat> whereas the Roaring Fork Valley boasts, boosts, boasts, boasts <laughs> more than 400 local nonprofit organizations that enrich our community by promoting and perpetuating programs that enhance the health and welfare of our citizens through inspiring hope and strengthening resilience, enrich our lives with arts, culture, and recreational activities, serve as a voice of our open spaces, forests, rivers, animal life, and human landmarks, and historic landmarks, whereas many local nonprofits are partners with Picking County government in responding to and addressing the problems of our communities, and without these nonprofit organizations, the cost of our government and the cost to our taxpayers to meet the needs of our citizens would be far greater, and whereas local nonprofits are staffed by individuals and volunteers who have passion for what they do and often face endless hours of work and growing funding challenges with little acknowledgement. And whereas Pitkin County citizens have the force, had the foresight in 2002 to approve the establishment of a dedicated property tax fund, raising over $2 million a year currently to support the work of our local nonprofits, which has now been reauthorized twice and continues to provide a source of flexible funding to meet the ongoing fiscal needs of many nonprofit agencies. And whereas, given the volatile federal and state funding realities currently, the nonprofit sector of the Roaring Fork Valley needs the financial support and encouragement of individuals and corporations during 2018 to meet the ongoing social support and financial needs of our citizens at this time. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners is proud to salute all of our non local nonprofits during March 2018, this month of special recognition for the work of nonprofits and formally encourages Picking County residents to take the time now and throughout the year to thank our nonprofits for the work they do for all of us. 
and we thank all of you from the bottoms of our heart. And we are also at this time going, I am going to put in a little plug for the reauthorization <coughs> of the Healthy Community <coughs> Fund on the November 2018 ballot. So thank you. I don't know who is going to accept this. Um, I'll let Nan hold it. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to introduce who is here. We have uh, Dr. Vince Savage, who is the director of the Aspen Homeless Shelter for many years. Um, Liz Stark, who is the executive director of Community Health Services, Inc. in our community. And we have Hannah Horn, mm -hmm. who is uh, the administrative assistant at Response. She's representing the Response Agency, which provides support to women in domestic violence situations and prevention. So thank you all for coming. And I wanted to thank Liz to brighten up your office today. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. We, we really appreciate your hard work. And um, we think of you and thank you year and year beginning to end and every year. Yes. So thank you all. Thank you. Guys. Does anybody want to say anything? Other okay. than thank you for the recognition <laughs> and the appreciation. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. To continue, does the board have anything they wish to say in light of the proclamation? So we're going to move to the additions and deletions to today's agenda. I do not have any additions or deletions. Perfect. So I'm going to public comment. Public comment is for items that are not on our agenda. Are there any members of the public wishing to comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Are there any members of the board who would like to make comments today? Steve, go ahead, please. Mm. <laughs> Cut him with Probably his mouth with full. My mouth full. <laughs> Um, I'd like to let the public know about the upcoming spring concert of the Aspen Choral Society. Uh, it's a very interesting and unusual concert. The first part will be a string quartet with piano. Of uh, It's supposed to be a really beautiful piece. I don't know the name of the piece, but uh, the pianist is Kevin Cockle, who plays for the the St. Mary's Church and uh, all local mu musicians are involved in that. And then four songs, including a very unusual one called Der Feuerreiter, <laughs> which was written in the 1800s. And it's the most difficult thing I think we have ever sung in the Choral Society. Very interesting. And also there's an original work, The Wreck of the Hesperus, which is written by Paul Dankers, the musical director of the Snowmass Chapel. And so there are three concerts in the valley. The first is April 5th on Thursday at 7 o'clock at the Snowmass Chapel. The second one is Friday, the April 6th at the Glenwood Mountain View Church, which is by next to Buffalo Valley in Glenwood Springs. Also at 7 o'clock and then on on April 8th at the Wheeler Opera House at 7 o'clock will be the one concert here in Aspen. So I urge people to come out to that. It'll be a really uh, good concert. It's very interesting music, and I think people will enjoy it. Great, Steve. Thanks for bringing it to everyone's attention. And we have two, myself and one other county employee, are singing in it, too. So Well, that's worth our time <laughs> to go then, Steve. <laughs> Um, I would also like to just note that today uh, Rachel Richards is out of town, um, both getting a well-deserved vacation and also doing county business. And Greg Poshman is out for spring break, and he's doing a very exciting vacation with his twin daughters. So they will not be uh, joining us at our meeting today, obviously. So moving on to our agenda, our consent items, single reading, are the minutes of our March 14, 2018 meeting and a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners ap appointing citizen board members. And Steve, I know you always like to read the names of those we have appointed, so if you'd like to do so. Again, got you with your mouth full, Steve. Um, no, the meeting, the, the minutes look good. And what about the, do you always like to read the names of the 
appointees? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely want to call that one out. Let me get that resolution up. Um, so the two people getting appointed by us on the citizen boards. It's actually on the agenda item summary. Here it is. Okay, Jeff Woodruff to be a, um, appointed to the Planning and Zoning Board and Charlie Podolak to be uh, appointed to the Board of Adjustment. Perfect. So we have those two new members and we appreciate. Thank them for applying and we sure. um, glad to have their help. Perfect. So um, we have the two items. Do I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It's three to zero. Thank you very much. Next items on our agenda are individual consideration items. The first is a first reading, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners providing supplemental appropriations to the 2018 budget and amending the 2018 budget first quarter. Connie, please. Good afternoon. Connie Baker, Pickens County Budget Director. And this is the first reading of a resolution for our first quarter supplemental requests. Yesterday, staff was here to present each request and answer questions for the board. Uh, so hopefully it's still fresh in your minds from yesterday. <laughs> Uh, there were 13 requests in total. Um, uh, the effect on the 2018 county budget is an increase in expenditures of $1,071,462, an increase in revenues of $224,495 for a net increase in budget of $846,967. Of that, the general fund is 112000 uh, Would the board like me to go through each request? Uh, does the board want to after we went through them? We went through them in great detail yesterday, and we really appreciate that opportunity to have staff come before us and explain the, the details behind their request. So does the board have any questions other than that with for Connie, or do you have any specifics? Well, I don't have any, any questions or concerns with any of them. And the only reason would be to list the different things just for the benefit of the public watching on television. Okay. But I don't think we have to have the full explanation. Perfect. So, Connie, if you want to do that, uh, that's fine, Steve. That's a great idea. So, in the general fund, the first request is from the elections department. And they're asking for 20000 additional budget for 14 weeks of temporary help in the pri primary and general elections this year. This is due to some staff turnover and also due to a change in uh, the uh, ballots that will be sent out for unaffiliated voters. In the primary election. Okay. Uh, in the county attorney's office, there is a request for $11,500 for a housing fee study. And uh, this will look into the methodology for what we are charging on housing fees, which uh, has not been changed in uh, quite a number of years. Uh, in the Board of County Commissioners Department, a request for $5,500. Uh, this is to transition to a new video recording solution for BOCC meetings. It will integrate better with Civic Clerk. It will provide a better and more efficient process for staff and hopefully less downtime on meeting recordings. Uh, then in the manager's department, a one-time donation to the West Springs Hospital uh, expansion project. This donation is for $50,000, which the board had asked for. In community relations, Grassroots is requesting a contribution from Picking County and also other local entities uh, to help with the replacement and upgrade of their master control system. So this request is $25,000. So those were the general fund requests. In the Healthy Community Fund, $25,000 for the Aspen Hope Center. This is one that the board had asked to have reinstated in the 2018 budget, and this uh, came about in the budget process last fall. In the Open Space and Trails Fund, there are two requests. Uh, one is for uh, 
repairs to the historic Mather House in Emma for a new well line, a new septic system, and possibly a new well if the need uh, is shown while they're doing the work. And this request is for $88,000. Uh, next, they are also asking for uh, work for the Prince Creek Trailhead and parking area at the Bullpen Open Space Parcel. This is to approve safety along the Prince Creek Road and provide off-road parking for the trail network there. And this request is for $196,967. In the library fund, the library would like to uh, replace their furniture one year earlier than planned. It was in their five-year plan for 2019. Uh, the request is for $360,000. This is for the staff office furniture, which is uh, furniture that did not get replaced when the building was remodeled. Great. Thank you. Uh, they're hoping to have cost savings on this amount due to the fact that they're piggybacking on the furniture order for the new county facility. In the transit sales and use tax fund, there is a request which was approved at the last EOTC meeting on March 8th for $40,000 for a study on the pedestrian crossing at State Highway 82 at Buttermilk. In the Solid Waste Center Fund, there are two requests. Uh, one comes about because they were awarded a grant from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. And uh, this grant will be used to purchase bear-proof compost collection bins and collection buckets. And so on that one, there is an equal amount of revenue and expenditures, $24,495. The second request from the Solid Waste Center is for $25,000 to complete the landfill stormwater mitigation project. Uh, they had hoped to finish it in 2017, but there is still a bit more work that needs to be done on the electrical to uh, finish installing the pumps and the pump control panels. And then finally, one last request, which crosses two funds from the general fund into the housing fund. We are requesting transfer of $200,000 from the Employee Down Payment Assistance Fund into the Housing Fund for the Deed Restricted Program. These are both programs to try to encourage uh, the purchase of primary residences by county staff. One has been more successful than the other, so we're asking that funds be moved to the one that is getting much more interest this year. So again, the net, net impact on the county's 2018 budget is $846,967. Thank you. Steve, do you have any other comments or questions? Um, just a comment that uh, this, this really shows the Mike. wide variety of things that we do and uh, that the county does and how we spend our money. Um, just a whole lot of different different things that benefit the public so thanks Connie for putting all that together and I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution providing supplemental appropriations to the 2018 budget and amending the 2018 budget second okay, I have a motion of a second this uh, is the first reading we will we will have a second reading public hearing on April the 11th 2018 before I call the question, I want to tell you how much I appreciate the fact that we have, we, we bring these supplemental requests in at one time on a, almost a, a quarterly basis unless there's an emergency issue that comes up. I think it makes more continuity for us to be looking at the budget overall. And I really appreciate that the county has been doing that for the last couple of years. And, and it makes it, I think, easier for us to, to look at the whole picture. So I appreciate that. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank Thanks, you. Connie. Moving on, we have a resolution to enter into a lease agreement authorizing Pathfinder LLC to construct, operate, maintain, and administer fiber infrastructure in the county right away in Castle Creek Valley. Hello. Hello. Kara Silvernagel with the manager's office. And I'm GR Fielding, the county engineer. 
this license agreement we discussed last week at a work session. Uh, I don't think Steve was here. But uh, basically, this runs in conjunction with a revocable right-of-way permit to allow the internet service provider to run a fiber optic cable from the city limit in the county right-of-way up Castle Creek Road approximately 10 miles. Um, <clears throat> uh, the applicant has represented that they will have a very wide range of plans available for the their customers, and I believe they stated it was about $70 a month as the starting, and it goes up from there. Um, it is a little bit difficult because uh, their their service is going to be fiber optic, and so when you look at that versus things like Comcast or CenturyLink in the city, it's a different product, but uh, they will have some options available at a lower rate. Yeah, and uh, just what is before you is as we went, worked through this project, we tried to figure out how to uh, ensure the county's assets are the right of way and the infrastructure that would be in the ground. So what we came up with the attorney's office is creating a license agreement that serves as an umbrella for any um, fiber product that's put into the Castle Creek watershed. We know that their initial segment that they want to do is Castle Creek Road but the license agreement and any future right-of-way work permits that they're requesting for the entire drainage will fall under to the same terms and conditions put forth in the license agreement. So there's two pieces. The license agreement, which is what we're seeking a two-reading um, resolution to the board today, and then in conjunction will be the right-of-way permit for Castle Creek Road and any future segments which we've seen them propose, um, but we actually haven't seen the permit request come in can be handled administratively through public works staff. So um, for me, the, the key that I think benefits, uh, besides providing the service for the residents along Castle Creek, are that the county gets 24 strands of fiber. Um, the county has first right of refusal if they choose to sell this infrastructure in the future, and that they are building this with the capacity for um, enhanced capacity, I should say, by putting in some kind of butterfly conduit. Um, so I think th those are um, those are key issues for me as far as let's make sure we're building this for future use, not just for today's use. Um, so um, I appreciate that, and I know, and I want to thank both of you and all the other staff. I'm sure the attorney's office had a hand in drafting this. This was a first. This was not an easy document. I know it went through lots of time and careful reading and rereading and revising and. Um, we really appreciate it, and it, it's hopefully we'll just see how this one goes, and we can tweak it as need be and move it along to see if other projects like this come up in the future. So thank you. George, please. Uh, hi. Yeah, I think this is a great project. It, it's uh, nice to have a homeowner that has the ability to uh, provide this service uh, for other home homeowner users along the Castle Creek drainage. Um, my question is, uh, how will other homeowners tap into this? Let's say... Uh, residents up at Little Annie's Road. Will they have, to, well, how will they tap into it? Yes, yeah, so our understanding in working with the applicant, and so the non-technical person is going to try and <laughs> explain it. <laughs> it become very technical. <laughs> give that caveat. Um, but essentially, uh, they are creating a main line along Castle Creek Road, and they have garnered interest from home homeowners along that corridor. At the same time, they are also working with the various spurs along Castle Creek to generate um, interest from those. And as they're moving along, they will then also build out um, to those additional spurs. So I think it's just if someone is interested, they should connect directly with Pathfinders because they're kind of building up when there's enough um, economies of scale, then they will tap into that next spur after the Castle Creek Spur is created, because that's the main highway, per se, to actually tap into the rest of it. So, so how does that happen, GR, from a technical? I mean, so Castle, let's say Little Annie's subdivision, the homeowners want to tap into this fiber optic down in Castle Creek. They then have to drop a line that would then have to connect to that uh, fiber, and would they have to dig up the, Castle, the road again to do that? you're right they would basically just put their own line on their spur as Kara was explaining and that would connect into the main line uh, in the permit that they have submitted we have a number of what 
call handholes. And so there are small boxes where you open it up and a technician can go in. They can tap into the fiber in that space so you don't have to dig up uh, the road again. Great. Yeah, that's what makes sense. Steve, please. Yeah, I kind of had a similar question on the map that shows the yellow line and the red lines with the yellow line I presume is the one that's proposed to be built right now the red lines would be potential future ones mm -hmm. that some of them are on Little Annie Road and Midnight Mine Road so if they were actually burying a cable they would have to come back to the county at that point to yes, and get approval of that Yes, and uh, basically this license agreement covers the entire Castle Valley, and then each of those other red lines would come in uh, and would be handled administratively by the public works staff in a, another right-of-way permit. And uh, we know that what we anticipate at, uh, at the staff level right now is that once the line gets installed up past Midnight Mine, that we'll be seeing a permit for Midnight Mine Road. Once it gets on beyond each of these other areas, then we'll start seeing those permits filter in and uh, we'll handle them on an individual basis. So um, could those areas possibly be act, uh, served by a wireless system that we would put in a, a tower coming off of the fiber optic line? And yeah. That seems to be the most cost-effective way that people could afford. Yeah, that's one thing we've been in very preliminary talks with Pathfinders about, but is one of the benefits of those 24 strands that they are donating is, it, you know, maybe there is one spur where there's just, it's too cost prohibitive to actually get the fiber given the number of homes and the homeowners don't want that. We could look at um, putting a, a tower in right there and then using, feeding that with a fixed wireless solution. Mm -hmm. So it opens up many more potentials than were there before for both projects. And then, then looking on the map, it, I see that the line ends at Elk Mountain Lodge, or I don't know if it's still called that, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it, so it doesn't go up to the Aces at the the, Mace, the Mace's house or to the Pine Creek Cookhouse. If, it, if anybody up there wanted to extend it up there, then they'd have to come back to the county and ask to extend the line the fiber optic line further um well actually in between since our meeting last week and uh, today i know that aces um not sorry not aces excuse me the pine creek cookhouse has reached out wanting to know what it what that cost would be and i connected them directly with pathfinders so i know they are in conversations i guess um i don't know how that works it would look to gr of how that would fall with the extension because the way we've written the license agreement is even though the line shows just the 10 miles up, the license agreement does cover essentially the entire watershed. It's not going to go up to <laughs> Pearl Pass, but covers that. <laughs> so I guess it would be GR and the right-of-way permit for that extension. We, we handle it similar to any of the other spurs. Okay. So can I tag on to that, though? Would you have an issue with the Forest Service? Because doesn't that, wouldn't that line have to cross through under Forest Service land? All of our permitting on Castle Creek is within the Castle Creek right away. Okay. Okay. So even if it went up to Pine Creek, doesn't isn't he in the forest? Again, all it's something the, you'd yeah, find along yeah, the all, way. All, all of the road is uh, is still county. Is still county road. Okay. And then what about if it crossed up Midnight or Little Annie's into rural remote, where we don't allow the extension of utilities? That's an issue that Kara and I just caught with the last map. Uh, and that's a conversation that, that we'll have. I don't know if it's actually proposed to go that far up. Uh, Little Annie and Midnight Mine, it, it might have been more of an exercise in, in tracing the road. Um, up that may there. have to come back to the board yeah. rather than yeah. be done administratively, yeah. yes. just because of our concern about the extension of utilities. Okay. And we're aware of the rural and remote that is right in this exact same area okay. and the concerns related to that. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Any other questions, comments? This is a public hearing. Are there any members of um, the pub? Yes, Steve. This is not a public hearing yet. Oh, no, you're right. It's not. We're going to continue it to a public hearing. hearing on, public but I hearing. notice there are members of the public till April 11th. Uh, I move to approve. Yeah, that was easy. That was, <laughs> thanks for catching second. that, Steve. <clears throat> I have a motion. I have a second. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I had that written on here, public hearing April 11th, so I opened a public hearing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> so the next item on our agenda is a resolution repealing resolution 173-2004, 064-2006, and 064-2013, which are governance policies 2.1 through 2.16. Thank Please you, introduce Patty. yourselves for the public. <laughs> uh, Jeanette Jones, clerk to the board. And Phyllis Matthijs, assistant county manager. Thank you. Okay. And what we're bringing before you today for your consideration is a resolution um, repealing governance policies and also an ordinance adding one governance policy to the Pitkin County Code, and you have an ordinance before you. Um, staff prepared or conducted an analysis of the governance policies, an audit, if you will. And what we discovered in that audit was that these policies are contained in other documents, official documents of the, of the county, which is the county code and the home rule charter. And because they supersede the policies, we thought it was appropriate to repeal the policies and have them stay in those other documents. And the one exception to that is um, po governance policy 2.10. We are going to add that to the code as per the county attorney's um, direction. And that policy is? It. <laughs> is the reconsideration? Reconsideration. A reconsideration. That means when me. we want to reconsider yeah. a vote, the manner in which we do so. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. So what we're doing is we're cleaning up some redundancies that we didn't need to have. Housekeeping. Thank you. Uh, does the board have questions? Um, yeah, I did have a question. Um, There was something, there was a statement about the uh, components, maintaining certain components of the transit policy. And then it said that these would be placed in a future comprehensive plan, but we need to maintain them in the, as part of the code right now, I presume, and then move them later. Um, they were, there's, we, dissected that entire section. There's about a paragraph left in the transit um, policy, the governance policy, that was really a position statement of the board. Um, so it wasn't really quite a, a, a policy and it didn't fit, So, which is why our recommendation is into uh, a, a comprehensive plan. Um, it can still maintain as a position of the board um, it was just confusing as a policy. And when we looked at it, there was a lot of that policy that was somewhere else. There was just that one, when we were in the work session, I think it was Rachel that brought up, this is really, we want to maintain that this is our position, um, but it, it didn't really need to be a policy is how we had interpreted it. So when we look at it, um, it, it, by eliminating it as a policy, it doesn't have to be eliminated as a position that the board would like to take, and we can formalize it as we move forward. In a master plan. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? It was, a, it was one that got, when everyone was reading it, that, oh, we don't want to lose this, but where do, we where put do it? you put it? <laughs> okay, Steve, you good? So, yeah, I'm good with that. So this this is not a public hearing. The public hearing will again be on April the 11th. So does the board have a motion? Let's see, is this, uh, I wanna make sure. I'll Mo move to approve this. This is the uh, number five item, right? Yeah, appealing, so a repealing resolution. So this is uh, approving the resolution, repealing those, right. those uh, resolutions. Yeah, if we could have two separate motions, Steve, that would be great. One yeah, we'll, go, on the we'll go to the next one because it's ordinance. on a separate item. Is that what you need? Yeah, it's a separate item, number yeah. six, so we'll go to Thank that. Thank you. So I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. So now we have the ordinance amending Title II of the Picking County Code to add a new subsection 2.04.010C for the reconsideration process. So this now is where we're putting the manner in which we 
reconsider a vote, it's now being put into the code. Correct. That's policy. Out of the governance policy. 2.10, that's the exception of the, we're, we're repealing the policy. Replacing we're putting it in the code. Restating it into the Pitkin County Code. Okay. And how is that done? What's How do we reconsider? Yeah, what's the process of that? Any action you take will be recon has to be reconsidered at the next available regular meeting. In other words, if you want to change your mind on a vote that already occurred, um, that would allow you enough time to, as Jeanette said, the next regular scheduled meeting, but not beyond that. And that way, anybody paying attention to that, a particular vote can rely on it or has some sense of repose after 30 days is what but isn't there a process that the um let's say i wanted to reconsider a vote um that i did um can i bring that up or uh, is it a yay or a nay that can bring it up it, right somebody voting for in the affirmative for whatever the motion or or whatever the topic of the vote was can move to reconsider but no later than the next regular scheduled meeting so someone, a someone Wednesday in the, meeting someone in the affirmative so somebody can. who voted I, yes, yes could bring it up and then you have to have a vote with a majority of the board regardless of what position right voting yes to reconsider and then it would come back at the following regular meeting right well you could it depends you, could, you could handle it right, it right then, then and there or you could ask for it to come back at the next regular meeting giving everybody depending time. on the issue if you wanted to uh, re-notice it or if you simply wanted to take an action to change something you, okay. you could Which do it either you could way do it either or and how is that different than what's currently on the books? That is what's currently on the books. It's just embedded in a, okay. in a resolution a that was policy. done. I believe it was a resolution that was done many years ago. And I happened to be here when it was done, so I knew it. So I, we keep it to that. So now it'll be codified someplace okay. so it's more widely known. It was, for some reason, in the governance policies. Yeah, did, things like that get picked up in different yeah. places. Great, thanks. Yeah. Okay. And this is eliminating all those governance policies, so we won't have those anymore. So the, uh, the policies of the board are essentially in the county code. Or in the Home Rule Charter. Or the Home Rule Charter, Or in yes. another document. And it was just confusing. People didn't know that these existed. And, and I'll just, just do a brief explanation as to why that happened. We were, at that time on the board, we were, invest we were looking into this new management of government called gov governing policy it was a governance mode and we actually went and heard the speaker who created this whole program and at that time we felt that there were some things that might be appropriate but at that time we there were things that weren't so we passed this governance policy section and now in further reconsideration of that we realized that maybe we didn't need to do that then All right so um does the board i need a motion and a second i'll move to approve this ordinance second I have a motion of a second, and again, uh, this will be uh, set for second reading on April the 11th. I'll call the <coughs> question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item on our agenda is a resolution authorizing submittal of a grant application to the State of Colorado Department of Local Affairs Energy and Mineral Impact Assistance Fund, and if approved to accept the grant, for broadband middle mile project and this will have a public hearing on april the 25th just to throw us just yes. i caught it yeah. so <laughs> and, and i just have to ask we are doing this we don't usually have to have it come before the board to submit a grant but we're doing it because we're also going to we're also going to allow the acceptance of the grant so um Kara Silverman, Sorry. the manager's <laughs> office um the grant, the grant is to the State of Colorado DOLA program. DOLA requires official board action oh, in do. the submittal of the grant. And then Pitkin County Code requires a two-read resolution of acceptance of the grant. So rather than doing three presentations over the course of this, we're trying to do it in two. Um, and so the grant is due on April 1st, and so that's why it's before you today. And Jeanette caught that we need to... Um, do the two reading ordinance to accept it and so because of noticing that's why the second reading is pushed out to April 25th okay. because of noticing um, so the and grant we only, that we're we only have to have one reading on the uh, um, authorizing submittal correct. so that's why we're not doing it by emergency ordinance today. correct okay. correct um, and then the grant application is basically for phase two of the implementation of our broadband projects so we've 
worked on and were awarded funding for redevelopment of three communication sites that we're calling really are the primary loop. Um, as we've been looking, and you guys may recall when we came to you in February, there's uh, still some funding shortfalls as we look at reaching beyond that primary to get to the secondary sites and those relay sites. So we are requesting funding from um, the Energy and Mineral Impact Fund for support of the, co the capital costs with those sites. Great. Yeah, George, please. Uh, how much are we applying for, Kara? Um, so in total, the project is about 1.4 million, so it would be a 65, 650,000 ask of the state, and then we're matching it at 55%. Great. So um, the grant needs to be submitted by the first. Do you need a signature from me before then? Anything? I just need proof of this action. So I guess I need you to, I'm not sure. It's in your file. Okay. Is it, is it in my file here? Okay, for it to be to move this forward. Okay, just okay. so make sure, because either that or I'd make a special trip down just to sign this okay. for you. <laughs> Does the board have any other questions? No, I'm good. I'd move to approve this resolution uh, so authorizing submittal of the grant application to Second. Dola for, um, this is good. Second. Uh, Anna, again, if you need any help with going to Dola, we're, we're getting good at going before them. They really appreciate it. I hear it from when I go to Northwest Cog. I hear from all the other jurisdictions, everybody's watching the great efforts that we're making here in Picking County for broadband, and um, the support we're getting for DOLA is greatly appreciated, so um, keep us posted. Oh, I also just want to say um, thank you to Northwest COG. They did provide a letter of support for our grant application as Great. well. So just Great. Sure that. Perfect. Thank you. And I did feature, you guys were featured in a broadband thing around the front page, the picture you took up at one of the tower sites, and I brought it home for you. I'll make sure you guys get it. So I need to call the vote. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All right. All right. Motion passes 3 0. Thank you. Thank you. And I will sign that as soon as the meeting's over, Kara. All right. Next on our agenda is an individual consideration items, one reading, and we do not open this for public comment. Is that correct? These are not public hearings? No. Okay. And so we have a resolution accepting the Kester Ditch Modification Agreement. All right. I have a map that will help us along with this discussion as well. Yeah, the maps were, were great help to figure out where both of these were <laughs> yeah. jointly located. So the first ditch here is the Kester Ditch. Um, Kester Ditch is this lower ditch here. If you can see the hand, uh, it flows from the Roaring Fork, it flows through, and this yellow outline property is the Lazy Glen open space uh, just southeast of Basalt there. Um, and What's happening here is we're uh, currently, Open Space and Trails is developing a trail uh, from the Lazy Glen subdivision. Um, and uh, we've put a bridge already landed across the Roaring Beautiful Fork. Bridge. There's, uh, we're currently developing this trail, which is the Green Line, and uh, it's going to connect into the Rio Grande Trail up here. Uh, this Lazy Glen Trail crosses the Kester Ditch and uh, part of the uh, due diligence with that is that the Kester Ditch would like a ditch modification agreement. <coughs> uh, since the trail does cross, cross the ditch there, it does go over an existing culvert, but uh, since we're gonna be putting uh, uh, some base material and asphalt surface over it, they, they just want the agreement in place so that they know that if they have to, they can come in and repair their culvert. Um, hopefully they won't have to. Uh, and uh, we've been working with the attorney's office and we've come to uh, uh, a an, uh, modification agreement that um, we both agree with. And so once we get this signed, we'll be able to uh, finish this project up, hopefully within the next two or three weeks. Okay. Um, can, can I ask real quick, what's yeah. the, perp the purple line? Oh, the re is, what's the? Yeah. Oh, so the purple so line is the Rio Grande Trail existing, and the red is the new Rio Grande. Yeah. So that'll be that's with my next item, the Arbany <laughs> Kittle. So or the um, not Arbany Kittle, the uh, Alexis Arbany Ditch. Uh, but these two ditches are are run uh, essentially by the same group. Uh, so we've kind of grouped them together. So this ditch agreement is applied to the Kester 
which is down here. Uh, and I can certainly go into the uh, Alexis Arbany ditch modification agreement now if you'd like, or if you'd like to. Yeah, I just, I just found it interesting to see that purple line as the existing Rio Grande yeah. that comes up and then bifurcates and then comes back. I always thought it ran straight across through that property. Well, I can explain that. Okay, so. would you, would you, because sure. I'm a little confused, obviously. Yeah. Can, yeah. We, can we just take these one at a time, though? Well, well, it's on this map, so. Well, the map will stay up. Yeah, it'll stay up. Okay, okay so we can do it one at a time, but I, yeah, okay. I just thought I would just get lost. I, I have a question, though. Sure. Um, so, Paul, will that entire will the entire trail, the Lazy Glen uh, addition, will that entire trail be paved? Yes. It will. Mm -hmm. And that it's hopefully will be done in the next few weeks? Yeah. And uh, do we have a ribbon cutting plan? I, I don't know. We certainly can. Well, I think we should. Yeah, yeah I think so, too. That bridge is beautiful. The bridge is, is uh, already getting used. Uh, folks are... Currently, the trail is a uh, soft surface all the way up across the uh, Kester Ditch, and people are using this exec existing uh, two-track road to access the Rio. So it's already uh, a successful trail. So, yeah. And then, sir, I know the original, uh, one of the original concepts was to uh, perhaps have a uh, uh, river park down near the bridge or a community garden. Is, are those still sort of conceptual or moving yes. forward? So the, uh, along with this uh, hard surface trail, we're working with Roaring Fork Conservancy and a uh, design firm to put in a uh, single track uh, a hiking trail along the river here. It actually crosses and then goes into another lower field down here. And uh, there's a series of interpretive signs that talk about aquatic insects and riparian habitat. And it's, uh, it's still getting developed, but it, it, uh, it'll move forward this summer as well. I was also hoping to tag on to that with Healthy Rivers and Stream, maybe some river frontage or river restoration for some fish habitat and improvements along there. So, gotcha. yeah, so hopefully we'll get you guys talking with Healthy Rivers and Streams. I've already mentioned it to Lisa. Yeah, McDonald. absolutely. Yeah, be great. Steve, please. Paul, in the um, ditch modification agreement in Article 3, it's about timely and proper completion of improvements. It says that, uh, I'll read it, developer must accomplish all work during relating to the improvements at times that do not interfere with the ditch's operations and that are outside of the ditch's historic irrigation season of April 1st through November 25th, unless the owner agrees otherwise in writing. So I take that to mean that we either have to finish the work by April 1st, actually doing the gravel and the compacting and the paving, or we need to get a written agreement from the ditch owners that we could do it during the later in the season. Yeah, so with the Kester, they, they actually turned it on yesterday. Uh, they do know that this work is not going to stop the water flow and delivery of water, so they were comfortable with us finishing that while that ditch is going. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Arbany is different, but I can talk about that too. <laughs> so they, but they, they realize the work yeah. is going to be done while there's water in the yes. ditch, and they're okay with that and, yep. and have put it in a written approval of that? Yeah. Or they will have done it by the time we do the work? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So I need a motion. I move to approve. A second. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And now moving to the second one. And yes, I do see that you're going to discuss why they're realigning it back to the old one. And it's the SC, Sierra. How do you pronounce that? Oh, uh, R Sierra. R Sierra. Trailhead. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So the, the history of this, of the Rio Grande in this section here is that. Uh, um, Back when the uh, the paved section that uh, if people have ridden this section of the Rio, uh, no, uh, this was paved uh, as part of the Basalt Old Snowmass Trail, and it was actually paved uh, before these tracks were pulled up. So, uh, um, so this got paved uh, because we could, um, and then. Uh, 
just in a future management plan back in 2015 or 2016, we had an action item to finally move the pavement off of this curvy section and put it back on this two-track road that was actually the railroad bed. So uh, now we're ready to move forward with that. And uh, it makes a lot more sense because uh, a railroad bed is, has been compacted over several, several years. Uh, we'll have less maintenance issues with uh, volcanoes and roots popping up through it. <laughs> so we're ready to, to move it over there, yes. over there now. So uh, instead of coming on the Rio here and then making a turn up to here or coming on the Rio from the Arciero trailhead and taking a turn, uh, it'll just be a straight shot. So, and that wasn't that an area of si significant safety concern, also. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't we have some? We didn't never had any safety issues along that stretch, or I don't know because of the winding. And so, it just makes better sense. For some reason, I always thought it was still along the straighter shot. I never, you know, because you always see that straight section that's running along the property up the, further away from the Rio Grande. So, yeah. kind of always assumed it was in the same place. Yeah, um, and and people people do use it, but right now it's just a two track. Yeah, kind of I only get kind of road. as far as the new Lazy Glen open space and go in and look at the gardens. And oh, that's a good idea. Chickens <laughs> and the lambs. <laughs> okay, Steve, please. Um, the purple line, which is the current paved bike path, traditionally was a road going along that I've driven it many times doing <coughs> maintenance on the Kester Ditch. Yeah. Um, now, is that a public right-of-way to use that road, and is that going to continue as a dirt dirt trail after the pavement's removed or does it go to the private landowners no it, it'll it'll stay as a public trail it'll just be a soft surface trail mm -hmm. um, as far as access from the ditch company we're still still working with them uh, they have been using uh, this access right here this lower part actually isn't paved this is a uh, still a road um, and they have been accessing the uh, uh, elect, uh, the Arbany and the Kester Ditch here by that way so we're going to work with them to make sure that they have some safe access while there's still traffic on the trail. So would they perhaps be driving then on the, the, the one that's upper on the map the purple one um, after the after it's no longer the real grand bike path or the yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, what we're what we're hoping is uh, there's an access into our agricultural field right here off this. That way we can pull them off the trail and uh, take them off those turns, and then they could just access through the through the field. Um, but we haven't figured out the best way that works for them. So yeah. Okay. George, please. So uh, a couple of questions, Paul. So the the lower uh, little purple line. <laughs> mm hmm that is um will that be reclaimed that's going to stay a soft surface that will stay a soft surface and will connect to the existing paved surface that will be uh yeah reclaimed and so you'll be tearing up that pavement and will that be able to be used recycled for the paving of the um, the new uh hard surface i don't know uh, i think that it will be re it'll be milled up and and re and reused but i'm not sure that's not sure where. And what's the, not what, sure if it's and what's the timing of all this? Uh, so that one, uh, and back to our ditch crossing here, uh, <laughs> this is uh, the Arbany Ditch, Alexis Arbany Ditch crosses right here, and this one actually does uh, affect the ditch water. So we are going to be pulling out an old culvert that was braced by some railroad ties. It's a pretty old uh, crossing there, so we're going to put in uh, – a different uh, pipe big enough to handle the water and uh, we're going to straighten it out a little bit to make it a little easier for the water to flow through as well. So that one we are going to uh, pull it out, put the pipe in hopefully by, uh, well we have an agreement with them to get it done by April 17th. Because that's when they turn it on. That's when they said they said they would wait to turn it on until yeah, April seventeenth. So, we'll get that taken care of, and then once we get that pipe replaced, then we'll start the paving. We already have the contractor and the budget uh, in place to to do that. I don't know when it's supposed to be done. So, so that section of the Rio Grande Trail that's not owned by Pickens County Open Space and Trails, is it? No, it's that's not. on the Rafa. 
it's owned by Rafta. Yes. Yeah, and so. But we have them. We manage it all the way to. I know we. I know we manage it, but so we had to uh, work with uh, Rafta to uh, to be able to do this work. We own a trail easement on the Rafta corridor in this section. Well, oh, we do. We coordinate everything with Rafta anyway, but um, from Woody Creek to mm -hmm. Sopers Creek. Pitkin County owns a trail easement and open space put up, I think, a half million for that. Oh, okay. Great, thanks. Mm. So, back to the ditch. It all started with the ditch. <laughs> That's right. Ditch one so, and ditch two. So we need a modification agreement for, for this ditch as well, uh, again, to uh, have some assurances that we're going to get this work done and we're still going to deliver the water and they'll be able to maintain their ditch and uh, we will. Yeah. Steve. So I'll move to approve the resolution approving the Alexis Arbany ditch modification agreement. Uh, I'll second it and just a, a quick comment back to one of Patty's comments. What I agree is uh, this, this will actually give a much better uh, line of sight for cyclists along there because that, that one little section through those trees uh, you're going downhill, there are some sharp curves, and it's always been uh, problems with the tree roots, and uh, it hasn't been the safest area. So this, this will enhance the safety of that area. Yeah. And since we've been into public safety lately, um, I agree with that. <laughs> so I have a motion and I have a second. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the trail update there, too. Most appreciated. Yeah. Okay, next. Dale, you don't have to move. This is an ordinance authorizing acquisition of a joint interest in the Red Hill Conservation Easement, and this is a public hearing. Um, it's our second reading. Great. Well, we presented this uh, uh, first time around Paul. with uh, the AVLT director, uh, Suzanne Stevens. She's also on spring break this week, so I'm just here on my own today. Um, the uh, proposal is that we would acquire a joint interest in a conservation easement on this 25 acres depicted on the map. Uh, we're doing that uh, for a couple reasons. The, the lead one being that uh, AVLT was a little shy of their $1.3 million fundraising goal and um, we got to talking to them about this and realized that uh, Pitkin County has a lot of residents that utilize this uh, trail system on Red Hill, uh, especially during the swing seasons when Sky Mountain Park is closed or it's snowy or muddy up here. Uh, this is the, the earliest of the, the kind of mountain parks in the valley that opens up and is usable. People walk it and hike it pretty much all year round, but um, certainly the trails dry out earlier than they do up here. Uh, so because it's uh, a property that's important to Pitkin County residents as well as the rest of the valley, uh, we took it to the Open Space Board. They unanimously uh, recommended that we make a contribution uh, of 150000 uh, against the, the total of the 1.3 that AVLT has put together on this, and we thought that proportion was appropriate uh, given the interest of our citizens in this. Um, it um, allows a reconstruction of what's kind of a messy trailhead system there now that requires on... Um, Garfield County Road 107 for access to this larger area up above. Uh, the planning is well underway to fix all of that. Uh, they're going to straighten Road 107 out and make it a straight shot down to Highway 133 and eliminate that jog uh, and then redesign the trailhead parking as well as uh, have at least one and maybe more uh, grade separated trails that connect. Uh, where this map shows possible trail. They're looking at a multi-use trail up the bottom of the gully. Uh, they are now also talking about a hiking only trail up that steep pitch that's kind of in the shade right where uh, the word possible ends there uh, that would be a, a more direct connection to Mushroom Rock. So uh, we uh, are 
at Open Space or continue to be enthusiastic about this and recommend that you approve this on second reading. Board, have any questions? Now, this is a public hearing. Um, I'm going to open this to the public. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on this item on our agenda? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the board for a motion. We'll move to approve the ordinance authorizing acquisition of joint interest in the Red Hill Conservation Easement. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. I will call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes 3-0. And, and thank you, Dale, for bringing this to our attention. I think this is a great uh, regional approach to solving some issues there. Thank you. And it's great to go by and see now conserved over the first sales sign up on the hillside. Notice that right away. All right, um, the next item on our agenda is an individual consideration. It's an emergency resolution confirmatory reading, which also makes this, correct me, Mr. Ely, this is also a public hearing, correct? Mm. Confirmatory reading, okay. Yes. public hearing, and uh, it, it establishes the action that's previously taken to adopt the IGA. And this was um, an emergency resolution, repealing resolution number 069-2017 and approving an intergovernmental agreement between, or an IGA, between the Board of County Commissioners of Pitkin County and the Board of County Commissioners of Arapahoe County for Gov Prime. Nan, please, we are here? Yeah, for real? Yeah, I'm Nan Sundin, Human Services Director, and uh, just a reminder that in February, you all approved uh, resolution 12, 2018, uh, which updated our intergovernmental agreement with Arapahoe County for the purposes of Gov Prime. Gov Prime is a cloud-based platform that will allow us to go paperless in the Department of Economic Assistance and allow us to link all the documents that we need as verification for public assistance programs in a cloud-based system. And Arapahoe County designed this platform. Uh, you all approved an IGA in 2017, but since then, and that's uh, 69, 2017, that one needs to be repealed as Arapahoe County has updated and improved their intergovernmental agreement. And we've worked out all the issues because I know we were just trying to clarify some points. That's why we continued this twice, I believe. Yeah, so this is a confirmatory hearing. You actually approved it in right. emergency reso in February. So by then we had worked out all of the conflicts. Um, Picking County will be purchasing more cyber liability. We were working on um, And uh, we actually next week, Arapaho will come and start training our team and we're hoping to be implementing by May 1st. Great. So this is a public hearing for this confirmatory reading. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on this item on our agenda? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. Steve? Well, first comments, I think this is a terrific agreement with Arapaho County and uh, I really appreciate the fact that they put all the work into developing this for for their own benefit, but right. then it's something that other counties are going to be able to use if they sign an IGA with Arapahoe County. So I would uh, move to approve the um, confirmatory hearing regarding this emergency resolution. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. I will call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank you, Nan. Thank and you. Thank Arapahoe County. This is going to be a great uh, agreement. Yep. Thank you. So now I'm going to open the board up for open discussion. Are there any items? I have one quick one. Our snow cat that we thought was stolen was actually moved a mile. Someone broke the window, drove it up <laughs> a mile up the road, tore the console apart to hotwire it. So it does have some damage, and it's going to need to be repaired. But it was nice that we found it. So I just thought I'd let you know. So somebody took a joyride in a snowcat. In a snowcat, yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, we're not comfortable with driving it up. Um, Fleet is going to take care of it and bring it down and repair it, and so it'll be parked for the summer. Um, we usually park it up at Red Mountain. Or we'll park um, it at home base this year. Yeah, oh. so it'll be there for the summer. So, and then, uh, so we're going to have to wait a little while to be able to get the new equipment for Colorado Public Radio up to Upper Red until we can get through the snow that's... Uh, is still up on top. 
Yeah, I mean, this was a little discerning when, when you mentioned this yesterday that we had our snowcat stolen. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way that we can ensure that that won't happen again and so, so someone can't access or hotwire? Are there mechanisms to, to prevent that? Uh, we'll get with <coughs> Fleet and try and figure out what's the best way to do it. Um, someone obviously knew what they were doing to be able to do that. Yeah. I think you can always break a window and hotwire, but... Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a, and we couldn't have an alarm going off up there because it wouldn't make much difference. So yeah, be yeah. interesting to find out. That's a good question. Steve? So is this only used to go to Upper Red Mountain or is it used to access other sites also? It's used for Upper Red. Um, that's a long road, five miles up that far service road to get there. And by the time you get to the top of Upper Red, it's usually snow packed for quite a while. Um, we're in the process of removing public safety from that site, so that will help a lot that we won't need to go up there as often. The Loge communication site for the public safety radio was just turned on last week, I believe, or maybe the week before. So um, Yay. that's really helping. And then we have Hunter Creek, uh, the water plant, covers downtown Aspen because that's shadowed by Loge and by um, the site at the top of Ajax. So we're, we have Aspen taken care of, and that upper red site will not be needed. Well, it still is um, FM radio. That's mm -hmm. what's still up there. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, we might need to just keep it on a trailer down at Public Works and then haul it up there when they need, they need it, just so it's in a right. secure place. And it just takes a really long time when they're doing that. As it yeah. is now when they park at the bottom of Upper Red, it's a full day to go up and down. Mm -hmm. So if they have to trailer it and bring it in, they'd probably trailer it and leave it overnight. And, and then, then come back up the next day. And then go up the next day so it's still uh -huh. um, risky. We'll look at what we need. Um, one of our plans is possibly eliminating the Upper Red site and just going with the Lower Red site. We can hike into Lower Red. Uh, we have permission through Starwood. It's about a mile hike. So in an emergency, it's easy to do that. They've done it with snowshoes. It's not long. It's actually less to hike in the mile than to drive the snowcat the five miles. Right. So, mm -hmm. but which is we're, more fun. We're, we're working with the Forest Service to see um, how we can do that. Um, it's been a little bit of work trying to figure out the history of how those two sites became about. Um, mm -hmm. What, appro what approving, um, approvals we got from the Forest Service, and we're actually meeting with the Forest Service tomorrow as we try and make this as simple a system as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, that reminds me, the, um, the parking area up on Upper Hunter Creek, um, where the water uh, shed department has, mm -hmm. is that, we were talking one time to trying to uh, uh, do an exchange on that uh, is that still uh, a discussion point or I don't believe we're doing it right now that's BLM property BLM, that little right. triangle yeah and uh, the BLM was looking for um, cost recovery of almost thirty thousand dollars to see to research whether <laughs> they would sell the property so with that thirty thousand dollar investment and it was open space that was looking to purchase it mm -hmm. because of the the parking, the parking area right. for the trailhead. Um, and they didn't believe that that was an investment because right now BLM is not going to do anything with that property. We have the, um, the easement to use the parking area. The water department for the city of Aspen um, has their approval to be there. So there's nothing that's going to happen to the yeah, property. There's no need. So they didn't think that the, in the investment of the $30,000 without having a guarantee whether they'd be able to buy it after that investment was worth it yeah okay thanks i forgot that was blm property up in yeah. there yeah i always thought it was kind of forest but it's blm it's weird isn't it a little mm -hmm. triangle in there any other open discussion items um no nope george you're good yep okay so um that being said i need a motion to adjourn so move second i have a motion to second all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. thank you thanks everyone thank you grassroots So don't drop your eggs on the way home. Those are my two of my faves there, John. I won't. Did you do those? Mm-hmm.